Today, we're going to talk about why you're not getting a software job, and I'm going to tell you how to fix it. Getting that first software job can be very daunting and scary. It requires a lot of patience and perseverance and education and going through a lot of the interview process. In all my years working here at Coder Foundry and on the YouTube channel interacting with students, I've seen many reasons why people can't get that first software job. The good news is it's all correctable. Now, when you undertake a life change or like a career change, trying to go from one career to another, like software development, it's very difficult. And guess what? You're going to face a lot of barriers to that change. Now, all these barriers exist in any job change or any kind of life change we make. And they're ones you would think of in normally that we occur in society. That could be racism. It could be ageism, sexism. It could be you have a wage gap or an employment gap. You have a health or disability issue. Or maybe there's an economic downturn and maybe there's just a bad interview practices and you just can't overcome those. A lot of people will go through the effort of learning how to code, but then they look at these external factors, which are real and it demoralizes them and it causes them to quit. They see that these external factors are in control of their destiny. In other words, what's going on around me, outside of me, the things that are out of my control, keep me from breaking in to that software job. In other words, they believe really the only way to break into a software job is luck. But in all of my years of placing students into software jobs, I have seen people succeed despite the barriers, the external factors they face. And I've taken note of what we do for students and what they have done. And I want to share those actionable techniques with you. Now, the big difference we see between successful and unsuccessful people is that successful people believe what they do matters more than the external factors. In other words, what they can control is more important than what society could do to them. But it has to be more than just a belief. We can't just believe this to be true. They had to do something. The number one reason we see people fail at breaking in a software job is because they're not focusing their learning. You need to pick one thing that you want to build. Now, a lot of people try to build everything. They're learning eight or nine languages. And when you do that, you're not successful because you really aren't expertise enough to get a job. You just know a lot about a lot of things or very little about a lot of things. The successful people pick one thing to learn. And this is how you can choose to do that. Number one, pick what you want to build. You can build a website, a mobile app, a desktop app, or something like data science. Now, once you pick what you want to build, that narrows the things that you need to know how to do that. For example, if you know nothing and you don't know what to do, we suggest you pick web development. If you pick web development, that takes you down to a couple or three stacks that you have to learn in order to be successful at getting your first software job. So in web development, that's ASP.NET, like we teach here at Coder Foundry, maybe full stack JavaScript with Angular or Vue or React, or maybe Java Spring Boot. Any of those, will get you that first software job in web development. Now, the next thing that someone needs to do after you've gone through the learning process is you must have a LinkedIn account. And if you already have one, there's probably some very easy fixes you can make to improve your chances for a recruiter or an HR rep reaching out to you. The first mistake we see a lot, and we've proven this to be true because we've asked people to make this change, and then immediately you can see the results, is having a professional profile picture. Now, just remember, LinkedIn is not Instagram, it's not Twitter. So having a professional profile picture will increase your chances to get in a recruiter to call you. Now, if your recruiter can't find you, the reason is, is because you're not coming up in search results. There's also a place where you need to put in your stack that you're working with. You can set these by horizontal bars set apart where you say, I know Java or I know ASP.NET, C Sharp and JavaScript and HTML. And put these keywords in the, the description right underneath your profile picture. That's because recruiters and HR people are searching for .NET developer or JavaScript developer. And if your keywords aren't in there, they won't show up in a search result. The other thing that you can do is add your portfolio link directly into your bio as well, so that if someone comes to you and you show up in a search result, now they can click on your portfolio to learn more about what you do. Make these three changes to your LinkedIn profile and you'll get a lot more inbound requests from recruiters and HR departments. 
One of the most common mistakes we see people that aren't successful at finding a software job is they don't have a portfolio. They leave university or a boot camp and they try to trade just on their GitHub repos. And that's simply not good enough. You need a professionally hosted, clean, attractive website that someone can just click on to learn about you as a developer. Now, when you're trying to break into that first software job, the biggest thing that you have to overcome is your lack of experience. You've never worked anywhere. And if you're coming out of a boot camp or you know going to university, a lot of times you don't have anything to show. So what you need to do is create that experience by building your own projects and putting them into the portfolio. Now, specifically, I believe you need a flagship project, the one that shows everything that you can do as a software developer, and you use that as a artifact or a sales tool during the interview process. Now you can have multiple projects, but I believe you at least need that one flagship project that's hosted, easy to look at, and easy to demo so that someone can see what you can do. To get that first software job, you must pass a technical interview. Now, a lot of times learning to code, people think, well, that's the hardest part, but probably passing a technical interview is the most difficult part of this entire process. And so I'm gonna give you a couple of hints here of what people do that are successful at navigating technical interviews. The thing is, is they turn technical questions into demos. And this is why we build that flagship project so that when people ask us a technical question, not only do we give them the academic answer, we can point to our code base that also answers that question. Now, how do you know if your code base is ready to be something that you can demo or turn any technical interview question into a demo? Is Google the top 30 interview questions. Go through them, answer every one of those, and see if you're using those techniques in that interview question anywhere in your flagship project. And if you are, now you can turn that technical interview question into a demo. Now, one of the common mistakes people make is they don't realize there's a hidden job market for software developers. They go to LinkedIn jobs or they go to Indeed and they think that's the total sum of all the jobs. But what's really true is there's a hidden job market that is only exclusively done through recruiters. And that means that you need a recruiter in your corner when you're looking for jobs. Now, it's very popular to bash on recruiters. In fact, unsuccessful people I think blame the recruiting process more than they should. I want you to resist that urge to do that and build positive relationships with as many recruiters as you can. Because if you have a positive recruiter in your relationship in your life, then more than likely they're gonna present you for that next job opening. Finally, the activity that we see unsuccessful people do is complain about the process. They get interviewed by a company and say it doesn't go well. They run straight to social media and they complain about maybe the hiring manager was bad, the questions were bad, the whiteboard process was bad. They have all of these negative things of why they weren't successful. In other words, they blame the company, they blame the recruiter, they blame every external factor they can on why they didn't get that job. Successful people don't do that. What they do is they take an interview process in and then they learn from that experience, even if it's not successful. They don't run to social media and complain about the process. They learn from it to improve their chances at the next interview. So resist the urge to run to social media. While it may give you empathy from a certain segment of society, it's not going to put you in that positive light. I want you to put yourself in the most positive light that you can so that next employer will want to hire you. So unsuccessful people look at external factors on why they're not successful. Successful people look at what they can do matters more than what society can throw at them. And here at Cutter Foundry and working with students on YouTube, we see this over and over and over again, that people from all walks of life overcome all of the external factors by controlling what they can control. So build that portfolio, build that flagship project, learn how to turn an interview question in a demo so that you can get that first software job.